Hello and welcome my Anijated Leaves. So today we are gonna react to Jane Animation's newest video. She's attempting a two-player Nuzlocke. I haven't watched the video beforehand, so let's dive right into and see what kind of rules this has. You know the drill at this point. Pokemon faints, it dies, catch one Pokemon per route and nickname it to set up for emotional trauma. But this time we're doing something a bit different. A two-person Nuzlocke. It's technically called a Soul Link, but no one knows what that means. So basically you and person two play the same Pokemon game at the same time following the same Nuzlocke rules. However, your Pokemon are linked, which means if my starter dies, player two's starter also dies. <laughs> I just love the death animation she does. It always looks so... Goofy? That's just... She's good at drawing, as you can see. And they can't do anything about it. Plus, we can only have one primary typing for both of our teams combined. So if I catch a water type and add it to my team, person two can't have a water type at all on theirs. And Cherry on top, all Pokemon are randomized. I can walk into the grass at any point and accidentally find God. And maybe he'll just kill all my animals right then and there. Quick question though. If you actually get an Arceus, you wouldn't be allowed to use the specific slate for the type that the other player has, right? Probably? Probably. Should work like that, right? But it would give you kind of a joker thing, at least if you can get hold of the plates. This is in Soul Silver, I think, was it? And I have no idea where you get them. There. So with all these new rules in place, I needed to find a player too. One who's a real Pokemon master, able to adapt, improvise, and strategize all at the drop of a hat. And who else other than Pokemon master himself? Jacob Alpharad, who at this point in time has a 50-50 Nuzlocke win ratio. Here's our Pokemon Heart Gold, Soul Silver. I have at least heard that name, but more for his Mario Maker stuff. He did have kind of a feud with Method. Over Soul Link Nuzlocke. We both go downstairs, barely greet our mom, and immediately. Wait, she is the main one and he is the female one. Okay, that's funny. That's. Why not? But it's funny. Beeline it to Professor Elm's lab to see what Pokemon he's got for us because we don't know. They're random. In case you forgot what I just said, we stroll up to him and he pats Jacob on the head and goes. Here, choose from these three. I picked them specially for you. Torterra, Tentacruel, or Ludicolo. We have a grass type, a water type, and a grass and water type. <laughs> okay. And one of them is even an actual starter Pokemon. But I guess they... No, they cannot play the same randomized round. Because one is doing hard gold and the other soul silver, so... The status should be different. Alright, what do I get? Why not make you Ariators? Wait, what was that? Hello. Alright, what do I get? Why not make Oh. Oh no. Yeah, the best choice probably would be Mankey, because why not? That would be a challenge in and of itself, with no damaging moves. And, well, Ariados is just... I like it, but it is a weak bug type. Ariados. Awesome. Jacob takes Torterra and I take Mankey and we name them Franklin. On our way to talk to Mr. Pokemon, Jacob runs into a Regirock in a random patch of grass, which just flat out explodes on him. No one died, luckily, but also, oh my god, we get an egg and immediately- But a Regirock using explosion, that could have ended his Nuzlocke right now. <laughs> Immediately, Professor Elm calls and tells us he's been robbed and bullied. You really couldn't handle being alone for 10 minutes, could you? On our way back to help a grown adult, we stumble onto a shady figure who scoffs, challenges us to a battle with Pokemon he stole from Elm, which we immediately win, scoffs again, then drops his wallet pa I mean, his start as Ariados, that's probably very good for her. He has pretty good choices for the starters, but Jaden... With the bad choices, will at least make it easier against the rival. Depending on what the randomizer gives the rival on the, uh, the rest of the team. 
passport, credit card, driver's license, social security, Target gift card on the ground in front of us for the world to see. Dude, get your crap together. You can't be doing that when you're a wanted fugitive. Back in the lab, Elma is crying on the floor as the police and our neighbor are trying to comfort him. And the police asks us if we saw anyone suspicious. Yes. We saw his info. Now here we get to name our rival. Jacob and I try to think of someone that we both shared some sort of rivalry with. When we remembered a certain professional Pokemon Nuzlocker has been consistently reacting and critiquing our Nuzlocks so far, some of his comments were more critical than others and directed at one of us more than the other. Mr. Policeman, his name is Jan. Hi, Jan. <laughs> Let's see if you can destroy us from the inside out. Anyway, our neighbor takes us out to some grass to show us how to catch a Pokemon, runs into Articuno, catches it in a Pokeball in the green, and turns to us and goes, see, just like that. <laughs> they give us some Pokeballs and we can finally start our journey. We both run around in the grass and our first encounters are Barboach and Houndoom. This would have been awesome for Jacob if he could catch the dang thing. Since we only had Pokeballs, Houndoom was not getting in the ball no matter what. And we- Yeah, that's the problem with randomizers. You might meet very strong Pokemon, but the catch rate is also very strong. We ended up not getting that pair, but you know, it's all right. There's plenty more encounters like Hop It Farfetch that Jacob accidentally kills or Geodude Gyarados that Jacob accidentally kills or Tyro Charizard that Jacob accidentally kills. <laughs> hey, why do I get this? And Jacob gets all this. And why do you keep killing him, Jacob? But finally, in the ruins of Elf, we managed to catch a new pair. Sand slash Camerupt. Not bad at all. We tried to name them Michael, but both misspell it. So welcome to the team, Michels. Then on Route 32, we catch Totodile Beedrill, which is also pretty good, mainly for just me. We started combining the two Pokemon to create their names. So we ended up somehow with Bedrodo. We ran- Wait, what? Wait, 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 wait. Let me do this, see this again. Beedrill and Toto... Beedrill... Yeah, okay, I can see it, I can see it. I don't know where the epistrophe is coming from, but I can see it who had a frickin' Palkia on his team. Fun fact, did you know if you Google Palkia type weakness, Google will tell you that he's weak to fairy and salamence? No other dragons, <laughs> just salamence. So Jacob and I started joking around it's every time. Still there. They still haven't fixed that? It's still the salamence side? Oh, Google, you're kind of better than that. But yeah, youngster, whatever, having a Palkia. Seems normal. We saw a Palkia. Oh no, if only I had a Salamence. Uh-oh, don't have a Salamence over here. It was kind of strange how many Palkias we ran into, but that didn't stop us from bullying every single- Yeah, I think the Pidgeys would be exchanged for Palkia here. Also a Beedrill Salamence. Why does this work? There could be an actual poke. well... A bit of fixing needed there, the tail should be attached rightly, but that, that wouldn't be too bad. Single one. So we take on Faulkner, the first gym leader, who has Kyogre Bronzar and Metagross Dragonair. Oh boy! Oh my god. After a lot of difficulty, we both managed to beat him with no casualties. I don't know how oh, that happened, slow. but hey, everyone's all right. Oh, he's gonna take himself out. <laughs> Oh my god! How about some encounters to lighten the mood? Oh, hello, Shuckle Suicune. That Jacob accidentally kills. In Azalea yeah. Town, we challenge Bugsy, who luckily wasn't as stacked as Faulkner. And as we step outside, Jan, who is surprised we haven't been demolished yet. Yeah, I'm surprised too. Challenges us to a battle, which we also win. <laughs> we I mean, against that team, Faulkner has... And they had no casualties? Yeah, that's kind of awesome. We run into Ma Wild Deoxys in the forest, who someone accidentally kills, and make our way to Goldenrod, where there's a security guard that'll give us both a Pokemon. Does Jacob know that he should catch the Pokemon? I wonder. Pokemon. He hands me a Porygon too, which I'm ecstatic about, turns to Jacob, 
and gives him Reggie Gigas. No way. Which we can't use because they're both normal types. Of all the legends oh. you had to get, of course you get the only normal type besides actual God. We beat Whitney and in oh, the National right. Park find Piplup Flaffy, which we named Plap. I pitched to Jacob that I'm willing to trade the Bedrotas to make room for this new pair, so he essentially switches Beedrill with Flaffy, which we shake on. Welcome to the team, Plaps. And then my Plap immediately almost gets killed. Oh no. Jaden. I'll fix it, I'll fix it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my bad. We find Dragonair <laughs> Shuppet, which is an actually insane pair we could use right away. But yeah, I ended up killing that one. Look, I'm sorry, Jacob. It is harder than it looks. Oh, wait. I think I understand now. If one of them kills one, the other cannot catch it as well. Yes. Oh. I thought it was just if one Pokemon of you gets killed, the other one has to also free someone. That's how Soul Link normally works. It's the, the same. Yeah, they are Oh, of course, you cannot catch it. Oh boy. We should do this sometime too. Yeah. Even though we cannot really record your playthrough. <laughs> To catch these things. We pour water on the strange trees on Route 36 that actually turn out to be Cradily Silcoon. We could have named them Dilly Doo and could have added them silly to the team as death fodder, but we ended up forgetting to. Which is, yeah, a pretty silly mistake, but what's the worst that could happen? Who needs death fodder in a Nuzlocke. Jacob and I make it to Ekratik and walk into the burn tower. As we are about to go down there, Jan runs up and is like, you're only trying to catch Suicune to make yourselves look stronger than you actually are. And we're like, no, nah, we killed him a while ago. But he still wanted to battle, probably to show off the Mew he somehow found. We beat him yet again, go downstairs, scare off the dogs, and go challenge Morty. Jacob didn't have any trouble for the team Morty had for him. But for me, I was having a bit of a harder time because he had a Lugia. Oh. Which neither me nor my team could even handle. All I could do was bubble beam it with plap and pray I don't get crit one shot as Jacob just sits there watching. But it ended up working out. We arrive in Olivine and- Yeah, but Jacob does have to root for her because if she loses something, <laughs> he loses something too. Climb the giant lighthouse, almost falling to our literal oh, death no. along the way. Reach Jasmine at the top, who's like, climb back down and go get medicine for Amphi and Cianwood. And we were like, we almost died getting here. Surfing to Cianwood, we encountered Obama Snow Pupitar. And I know what you're thinking. Yeah, we did catch them. Abamatar oh. joined the team immediately. And suddenly we've got a pretty powerful lineup going on. Also a random- And I know what you're thinking. Yeah, we did catch them. Abamatar joined the team immediately. And suddenly we've got a pretty powerful- I would have named it Pupi Snow. It sounds more fun. Full lineup going on. Also, a random guy in town gifted us a Mewtwo and Weeping Bell. Finally! I'm the one with the legend now! But we had to box him because we couldn't have two grass types. <clears throat> All of this sudden shared luck combined with our zero death win streak got us feeling pretty confident. Which naturally means it's time to get kicked in the throat. Specifically by a black belt martial artist, Gym Leader Chuck was indescribably tough in the most bullcrap way possible. For me, Jacob had no trouble at all because he's Jacob. He had a He gets lucky all the time, right? Mm -hmm. She gets a Mewtwo, but she cannot use it because grass type. Which Jacob got. <laughs> oh boy. Kingdra, which I brought Obamatar out for, nothing else on my team could really do anything against it. The main drawback of this is Obamatar's snow warning ability, which creates hail, damaging every Pokemon, including my own, that's not an ice type, which is pretty inconvenient in a Nuzlocke. I even made a, a teeny tiny comment about it when I first got him. I can, I can, I'm gonna call it, Snow's gonna kill one of my Pokemon. Kingdra goes down and Chuck's only other Pokemon, he's only got two. I mean, as long as she leaves Abomasnow out while, uh, while having the hail up, she will be fine. Ice types are not hurt by ice, uh, by hail. Is Frostlass, who if you don't know, has Snow Cloak. Snow Cloak makes the Pokemon 20% harder to hit if there's hail. You want to know how many Pokemon in Gen 4 have this ability? Five. Three of which being Mamoswine. You want to know how many Pokemon there are in Heart Gold Soul Silver? 493. Now, I know these odds sound pretty awful already, but you know what this Frostlass does? 
she uses Ominous Wind. Ominous Wind has a 10% chance to boost every single stat of the user. She gets the stat boost twice in a row. No! After a lot of strategizing, we both decided the best option for us would be to send in Michael as death fodder to heal up Plap because he's the only one that can really do anything at this point. And what happens? Please don't get another stat boost. You're, he's good. He's so good. He's no, no. Oh my! Frostlass crit one shots Michael as soon as he comes out. Our first deaths. Poor camera up. He was so proud for making it out of Jack's gym and then just falls over dead for no reason. I got Plap healed up and basically started heal stalling, which sure isn't a noble strategy, but t t uh, come on. Start. After literally struggling, but that means they are allowed to use items in battle, which in the mass lock, most people don't. But okay. This will probably have ended here if not. Against my own bad luck for what felt like hours. Finally, Frostlass goes down. Finally. Holy <laughs> shit. Jacob practically drags me out of the gym and we head to the beast. <laughs> That's a good way to sense on that. We decided to add a pair we caught back on Route 35, which was Charmeleon Donfan named Darfell. A fantastic duo. I was admittedly and I think justifiably still really salty about what we just went through, but Jacob convinced me that we should just move on. We got our Darfells leveled up and returned to Olivine to feed Amphi the medicine that we picked up so Jasmine would finally <laughs> do her that. job. And check this out. Already done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. And he gets an Azura while having an Ampharos? That's not fair. God. Look at our two screens real quick. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's all right. She also had a Geoxys. We headed no. to Mahogany Town, catching and adding Nidoran and Beberil named Beryl to the team. And in the Lake of Rage, Jacob caught a Kyogre paired with my Swalot. We never used this pair, but I just wanted to mention it for reasons. We oh wait, if you randomize the on map Pokemon as well, will it still be shiny? Even though it's not a Gyarados? We approach the glistening shadow of the Lake Beast, activate the encounter, and find a shiny... Banerian Dawn fan. Not, you know, the best, but hey, free shiny Pokemon. Doesn't hurt to cat. Oop, I killed it. <laughs> yes, you killed the shiny one. That's again, my bad. Sorry. Lance walks up to us and goes, Hi, I'm Lance. Grabs us by the wrist, kicks down the door to the Mahogany Town 7 Eleven, kills one of the guys in there, and runs into the rocket hideout where he continues to wipe out any living organism he finds down there. Classic Lance. We decided to copy him and beat up all the executives and their power generator. Right before we fly to Goldenrod, we pick up the seventh badge and then continue curb stomping Team Rocket. We were getting a bit too comfy though, and as Jacob wasn't paying attention, mainly because he just got a chicken sandwich, Obamatar was killed by a golem's earthquake. Oh no. That was a really bad blow and stung much more because we weren't paying attention. Sorry, I got distracted by chicken sandwich. Friend. <laughs> I don't want that on my tombstone. <laughs> also, I mean, losing her at Snow, it's a good Pokemon, but she does not have to worry about hail anymore at least. <sighs> But we did have to move on, especially since we were literally in Wait, what? The T Rocket guy is comporting. In the middle of a gang fight, we shoved our way to Rocket Executive and Big Boss Archer and give him a bit of a throat chop so he would calm down and stop doing whatever it is he was doing. And everyone is saved. On our way to Blackthorn, we catch Frostlass Corfish, which put me into a vengeful trauma spiral. Huh? you <laughs> <laughs> and then jacob caught himself both a suicune and an az elf we arrived and took on claire who led with a mewtwo against me which at this point i shouldn't even be surprised but all the rest of her team was pretty much a pushover for both of us claire's a bad sport and refused to think we were good trainers so we talked to the old man behind the gym and he's like so do you beat your pokemon and we we're like no and he's like awesome claire give him the stupid badge what yeah imagine caught being like that so did you kill him no okay then you're free now so now we can head to the Elite Four. Hey guys, I think you should go fight a horde of Asian women in Ecritique. Uh, so we enter the Ecritique theater and- A horde of Asian women?
start fighting the women, and the second girl for me sends out Ambipalm. As I switched to Franklin, it screeched, which I <clears throat> didn't pay attention to, and Ambipalm double hit killed Franklin. No. Our starters died. Oh. Dude, that was really sad. You know, a Pokemon dying in the Nuzlocke is always bad, but if it's your starter... And I know what I'm talking about here. That feels... ten times as bad. We were about to make it to the Elite Four with them, and BAM! Not alive anymore. They were with us through everything. Pretty much the backbone to our teams. Man, Jan's gonna make so much fun of us when he finds out. As we're still mourning, <laughs> the last kimono girl rest spams with Waylord. Do you have any dignity, woman? We're lamenting over here. We try to leave and the girls are all, No, no, go catch the legendary Pokemon. He's already got three. So I head to Whirl <laughs> Islands and Jacob scales the bell tower. And what legends do we find? The legendary Zangoose and Loudred. Zangoose and Loudred. I mean, Zangus at least looks cool. Finally, we have some freedom again, and as soon as we touch the water in Newbark to head to Victory Road, what pops up from the bottom of the lake but Entei himself? And Doduo. Oh my god! She gets an Entei. And here's Doduo. Hello, Dode. That's going in the box because fire types. We catch Cascoon Regirock in Victory Road and heading- That's so- that what whenever she gets lucky, at the same time she gets unlucky and cannot use what she got. Poor Jane. Towards the exit, Jan sprints up from behind us and I iconically say, This is your last chance to kill one of our Pokemon, Jan. And what happens? Fine. Oh my god. <laughs> no. What, what happened? Oh. No. That's not great. Uh, he killed one of our Pokemon. Yeah, that sucks. That really sucks. But, but if you lost your fire type now, you can use Entei. Starfell was an incredible pair we've had since the fifth gym, and we really grew to lean on. Or are they blocked forever? Because that's a type lock kind of thing. We lost quite literally half our team right before the Elite Four. Mm. We beat Jan for the last time, enter the Indigo Plateau, and immediately bolt to the PC to see what kind of damage control we can do. After a very long time of trying to stitch together the best teams possible, we ended up with this. Ampharos and Polion, Bibarel Nidoqueen, Beautifly Cradley, Dodrio Ente, and Victory Bell Mewtwo. I know, I know! Wow, Jaden, super balanced! You've got Mewtwo and Ente, and Jacob has a Beautifly! Look, I- this is the best we could do, I promise. Tell him, Jacob, tell him. Wait, weren't there only five? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Wait, what? That's the sixth one. Oh, they don't have enough Pokemon. Oh, they can't use one because of double types. Yeah, probably that because, I mean, if they only had five Pokemon, there wouldn't be any choice. They would just use what they have. I like that little Dodrio with the beady eyes. That's, that's good. Tell him, Jacob, tell him. Anyway, big deep breath. Here we go into the unknown depths of the Elite Four. Will, Coda, and Bruno were all no problem at all. We breezed right past them. Everything was going great. This is fine. Yeah, then. Hmm? Yeah, he's. Oh! Oh my god. Uh oh. Uh -oh. It's fine. I win these. <laughs> On the other hand, Karen was not as nice. No, I just mean, what if he does any charge move? Oh. Okay, he just did cross chop. He's dead. It's fine. I was safe to fly him. I'm just paranoid. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. <gasps> oh no. Oh no. Guys, we're so sorry we got you killed in the first, like, 15 minutes of having you. We ended that was quick. <laughs> ended up getting out of the battle with no more casualties, but facing Lance with a team of four each is really not ideal, to say the least. But we walked up to him nonetheless. Whether we win or lose here, this is our last battle. He leads with Fionn and Ledian, which we were both like, ha ha ha, Lance, is this all you've got? 
and then he hits us with the no. Jacob was up against his Porygon Z, Rampardos, Licky Licky, Zapdos, and Plusle. And he. Plusle. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Even though it's a pretty stacked team, he was holding his own and getting through them really well. On my end, I was dealing with a Giga impacting Snorlax, which I really had nothing for. I just had to pray for no crits and as many misses as possible. It goes down eventually, and what does he send out next? Palkia. Palkia again. Oh. I could really use a Salamence right about now. This is what we get. We bullied Palkia so much during our journey here. Looking at my team, I don't have anything that can handle Palkia either, except for Mewtwo. And what happens? He gets Spatial Rand crit one shot turn one. I am in a lot of trouble. I took so much time getting past Snorlax that Jacob was already done with his battle, so all he could do was watch this massacre from the sidelines. But wouldn't he technically also lose if she loses? Because he would basically lose the Pokemon. Technically, right? Yeah. And he technically loses them before he won. Kind of. I sent out Dillydew to confuse Stalem and just try to chip away at him with basically nothing. And my god was I lucky because if Palkia hit one more crit at any point, Dillydew and the run was over. And I was forced to dance on that line for a long time. But eventually, Dillydew lands the finishing blow. I was so proud. The pair that we caught so early on and deemed as death fodder was the one saving us. We're so sorry for doubting you, Dillydew. Thank you for sticking by us and not dying. But that was only half of Lance's team, might I remind you. Plap took out his Sand Slash, which stunk, but Bastiodon came out, tanked Plap's Surf, and killed him with Metal Burst. I was in shock with that one. That was our second oldest pair. Ever since our Franklins died, Jacob and I both started seeing the Plaps as our star members. Beryl came out and revenge finished the Bastiodon, and Lance's last Pokemon was oh. big ol' hard hitting tanky frickin' Azumarill. I sent Dillydew back out because Total Barrel reference. Total reference. would die immediately and started the chipping game again. If that wasn't bad enough, Azumarill set up the rain and an aqua ring for itself, oh, which no. turned this fight from uh to ah. Uh, this awful one on one lasted 10 whole minutes. I slap him, he slaps back much harder, and then heals. And then I heal, but eventually, Dilly Doo wins the stalling battle, and Azumarill goes down. In an unpredictable turn of events, Dilly Doo saved us from utter defeat. What an adventure we just went on! Insane encounters, insane bullcrap, friends, death, bullying, and the Dilly Doos. Thanks for going on this journey with me, Jacob. I quite literally couldn't have done it without you. And a salute to the buddies we made along the way. Except you. <laughs> oh. Okay. Oh, she put us out in the credits. That's good. Yeah, that was another fun episode of her. Ah, okay, yeah, she has had this. And she does have a big team behind her. Yeah, another fun episode of hers. Really enjoyed that one. And we'll surely check out the next one. Oh, a little thank you message. Thank you to my team. You've given me the space to stay inspired and keep making content I genuinely enjoy making. I owe you all so much. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for everything you guys do for me and the videos. That's nice for her to say that. That's good. It's good having a team behind you. Thank you for supporting our videos. I'm so grateful to be in the spot I am and to be able to do any of this in the first place. Thank you so much for watching. This concludes our animated Master of series. Wait, what? Does that mean there are no more Nuzlocks then? Oh no. Should do more. These are fun. Anything more coming here after this? Oh, I guess it's over. The End by Jaden Animations. Okay, and we ended as well. So, yeah, like always, check out my Twitch, Twitter, and Instagram. Links, everything is in the description below. 
like this video, subscribe if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. Bye, me.